the new parts have arrived from the factory without issue. They'll be fitted to the car in time for the next session. Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to the episode of my F1 2018 career mode, episode number 123 today for the USA Grand Prix in Season 6. If you did miss the previous one at the Japanese Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. But you saw there a minor fuel consumption update, a minor upgrade to the engine side of things, so I'm definitely planning on running the fuel quite a lot lower at the very start of this Grand Prix, especially because there's a forecast for some rain at the start of this race. So in what is going to be a very crucial race, this might be also a very tricky one for us because USA is always a tough track anyway and in the wet it's going to be even tougher maybe to try and make some overtakes if we need to obviously it depends on where we qualify but hopefully no engine penalties for us this episode so where we qualify will actually be where we end up but you can see there Renault maintained the advantage that minor upgrade for us almost is uh, you can't even see it pretty much on that graph there but it is there made a slight little improvement but Renault still have quite a margin there but oh, oh, we've seen in the past the performance chart doesn't always tell the full story and last episode if you did see that of course we came out on top with a clever strategy from both us, uh, myself and Verstappen. Uh, the entire team pulled off a great strategy there to get a 1-2 for Red Bull Honda. So, you know, I'm confident that we can still do some good work in this race. Just has to be, again, a clever strategy and hopefully trying to outmanoeuvre the Renault boys who have been known to make a few silly little mistakes when it comes to what kind of plan they have for their race uh, for, for their race strategy basically but uh, it is a crucial race because Verstappen leads the championship Carlos Sainz only one point behind we're seven points behind Verstappen off that lead and so also we have to just end Verstappen's hot streak he has won what's that now I think five races in the last six episodes so we need to put an end to it the only man that has been uh, being able to put an end to it was Carlos Sainz in the Russian Grand Prix but that was more so because Red Bull Honda as a team had a bit of a calamity so we really need to get our elbows out there and try and flex our muscles really and try and kind of push our way back into the seniority part of this team. I am the first driver contracted to Rebel Honda and we just need to be a bit of a brick wall against the momentum because we haven't had a teammate be this, uh, you know, overruling of me in a season since maybe season three, if you remember, in the McLaren against Fernando Alonso where he's winning so many races at the back end of the season. I was consistently only coming second place, but, you know, consistency for us paid out there. Consistency this season, I don't think is going to be enough because we're so level pegging at the moment that even if I come second, he wins every single race for Right now won't be enough whereas in season three it was so we really do need to try and put a stop to it so we're in q3 so as i was talking about all of that we've made it through q1 and q2 thankfully it was just a bit of a formality i was never really worried about that but here now we try and do the best job we can at trying to qualify as high up the grid as as we can obviously as we do the first run we did set the provisional fastest we go down to p2 ricardo goes faster but at least signs of the staff and are still behind us at this stage as we enter turn one there was quite a bit of understeer i gotta say in turn one the entire weekend here with this car but the car did feel pretty damn planted through the S section so that bodes well for us not only now in qualifying but for tomorrow there is some rain forecast so that might come in handy you know the kind of you know natural red ball downforce of the chassis might be something that pays dividends in the race and we actually uh, set the uh, provi another provisional pole position time for the second run and I was so happy with that but in the end both Renaults just have a bit too much pace so I was kind of celebrating a little bit too early there as I crossed the line because I was really chuffed with that lap time was provisional pole and then both Renaults go and improve that lap times at least we beat Verstappen to P3 on the grid but it's a front row lockout for the Renaults but like I said there is rain tomorrow so that's gonna make things tricky this circuit's already tricky enough for me against the AI but in the wet well I'm good like I said I'm gonna have to hope the Red Bull has a bit of natural downforce that can help us catch up I also did compromise on the wings I thought about going maybe one or two uh, wings lower than I actually ended up going because I remember there's gonna be some rain in the race which might be for the majority of the race so I have compromised my setup I think I could have gone faster here in qualifying but I've on purpose gone for higher uh, rear and front wings because in the race uh, that's where obviously all the points come so I'm looking to hopefully overtake these two Renault guys either on track or with strategy we'll have to see probably more likely will be with the strategy if you kind of look back over the past few races how good and consistent Renault have been in the races once they get clean air but uh, you know we'll just see how it goes but you know for, first and foremost we have, want to try and beat that guy right next to us on the second row for Stappen and then we'll worry about the Renaults bit after that so let's go to the grid then and see how things shape up for us on Sunday. What fantastic enthusiasm we have for Formula One here in the United States of America. And it's an enthusiasm born from generations of memorable Grand Prix racing. Bruce McLaren took his maiden victory at Sebring way back in 1959, and John Watson's 1983 victory at Long Beach, well, that still holds the record for the lowest ever starting position for a race winner. 
We have 10 turns to the left and 10 to the right here at the fantastic Circuit of the Americas. Overtaking opportunities into turns 1 and 12 at this anti-clockwise 3.6 mile track. But we may well see cars struggle to slow down there today as the wet weather does interfere with the low speed grip. Joining me for the Grand Prix once again is Anthony Davidson. They must be starting to feel the pressure at this point, Ant. Surely there's a real shot of the title on the cards here, but one error at the wrong time, well, that could throw it all away. We have a really close scrap at the top of the championship at the moment, and they're right in the thick of it. But any mistake now could be disastrous. True enough, but that pressure goes both ways. A failure or a mistake at this point could spell the end of their championship hopes, but they know their rivals are in exactly the same situation. Let's just hope the title is decided in the purest of ways. So let's have a look then at the starting grid ahead of this USA Grand Prix for Season 6 of F1 2018. Karim had a good day in the office for the Aussie man with all the bad luck in the world this season. Dan Ricciardo though on pole position and trying to shine in this very gloomy Sunday race here at USA Cota with second place man Carlos Sainz making a front row lockout for the Renaults. The second row is all Red Bull Honda with Fernando Alonso in P5 and Nico Hulkenberg P6. Brendan Hartley, Charles Leclerc next with round in the top 10 with Sergio Perez and Stoffel van Dorn. Ocon Vettel then Valtteri Bottas and Hamilton with a penalty down in P14, then the Haas on the next row with Roman Grosjean on P15 and Kevin Magnussen P16, Kimi Raikkonen in 17th alongside Gasly with a penalty and the last row of the grid goes to the Williams cars of Lance Stroll and Sergei Sorokin ahead of what looks to be quite a doom and gloom USA Grand Prix. Right, so here we are in P3 and indeed it is uh, quite a dark and gloomy sight ahead of us there in the cockpit. The two Renaults lock out the front row and it's going to be a very difficult task today to maybe overtake them. We're going to start at intermediate tyres, although look, if you see on the weather forecast symbol, that symbol is for heavy rain. So we could technically go on full wet, but everyone on the grid I think is going on into. So we've had this before where you start on intermediates, but the conditions are actually heavy rain conditions. So this might be a very, very treacherous start to the Grand Prix. Everyone tiptoeing, very nervous on the traction even mid corner the grip might not be there because there's just too much water for the intermediates to deal with but slowly and surely hopefully it will become light rain instead and the inters will actually work properly but we're going to really go down low on fuel we've got excellent fuel with this Honda Power unit we've got an extra fuel update for this weekend so going to really just go down to pretty much only a half a tank more than we need to get to the end of this Grand Prix we've had monsoon conditions before at USA so nothing new here but it is going to be a tricky side but we're in P3 and we've got to just look forward rather than back and hope for the best here in what is a crucial race for us today in the Drivers' Championship as we go to five red lights. The USA Grand Prix here in Austin, Texas. Five lights are out and we're underway and it is a good start for us actually there, surprisingly in these conditions, but it's even a better one for Carlos Sainz. There are two Renaults side by side into turn one. Sainz dives it down the inside there to take the lead. We've been able to dive on by Max Verstappen there on the left-hand side. We get ahead though in P3, but the two Renaults are still so much. There's contact there and Ricardo's round to be nearly T-boned. Daniel Ricardo controversy. His science gets overly aggressive there with his teammate. He dived down the inside just like Verstappen did to me, but the difference is those two continued to fight there, and there was genuine contact as science swipes across Ricardo, and he sent spinning round. Let's have a look on board here. It was a it was a mega start though. Fair play off the fiber lights. Great traction there from the Spaniard, and science now dives it down the inside. Big old dive. Ricardo makes some contact there, but leaves him the room. And at this point there, they're making some contact already in the exit at the corner then down the hill at this point I think there's going to be a bit of contact oh the tiniest of margins actually very very lucky and that's also probably uh, part and part due to the aquaplaning maybe you know Ricardo didn't need too much to be sent around when you've got such tricky conditions but that's a front wing uh, half a front wing off at least I think for Ricardo on the right hand side and so that's going to be a, a big amount of damage for him and so he's going to have to make an extra pit stop already before we even get into the you know meat of this Grand Prix really so as we move on now to lap number two science now setting the pace here in P1. We're P2 now. Verstappen is P3, so we have one less Renault to worry about, but it's the wrong Renault that got spun around there at the start, in, at least for our sake and for Verstappen's case there, so we still have to do the job and try and chase after Carlos Sainz, because remember, he's six points ahead of us in the Drivers' Championship, and uh, Verstappen is seven points ahead of us, so we need to really do a good job here if we can. So as we move on through this Grand Prix, lap five, we set the purple first sector there. We're actually going really well, and like I said, the Red Bull might have some you know, natural downfalls versus the Renault to see us through. We've seen how many times in real life the Red Bulls have gone so well at Cota, especially in wet conditions. I mean, I'm remembering 2015 
15 where they went off to a stonking start in these kind of conditions here. And so you're seeing that right now because we're putting the pressure on Science and Verstappen. It's just about keeping up with this as well and trying to get away from P4 there. But we just can't get enough straight line speed because I think the Renault obviously has probably ran lower wings than we are. From qualifying, obviously, both Renaults were very good, even though I did set provisional pole. They just came out and smashed that at the end of the qualifying session. So they're definitely going to have an advantage there. But we have the advantage in Sector 1 at least. Sector 2 and 3, a little bit debatable. Sector 2, I think Renault probably have that with the back straight. Sector 3, kind of half and half because through the triple right-hander here, you're seeing I do have some good speed, but in the stadium section with off-camber double left, the Renault seems to have good momentum through there. So it is a bit balanced here, and we need to try and suss out where we can maybe make a move and try and go, basically now just try and learn the circuit a little bit in these conditions and try and suss out where you know, we can actually fully put down the power, make that time game we need. And Verstappen goes fastest there, you saw. So he's also got some pace and he's going to keep the pressure on us. So on the minimap, you can see he's gone away from P4, which is uh, McLaren there. I'm guessing probably Fernando Alonso ahead of the Mercedes car of Nico Hulkenberg. But Carlos Sainz sets a purple then on lap seven. We, you can see on the top right, we go with the personal best time, but it's not enough to get the purple lap time there. But at least good signs that we're sticking with Carlos Sainz and especially through uh, turns one and sector one, we are, you know, keeping him very honest. Like if, if he was to look through in his mirrors if he actually could see something past the spray from his car he probably would see our car in the background there as we now really close up at the hairpin and now it's just the straight again where we just don't have enough to really close up there even in overtake mode rich mix you can see you know fuel wise we're, we're looking fine it was a very good decision to fill up on less fuel because in, even in these conditions you don't want to go rich mix the entire time you want to kind of go with standards to try and get some better traction at some of these corners but I just don't have enough uh, either pace or confidence as well I will say that I think that's also a big thing in these conditions you need confidence of your your braking ability into the you know that let's say that big brake zone are at the end of the back straight to actually make the dive bomb or the pass on the outside without locking up to actually make the move and at the moment I just don't have that but as we go on through the laps like like I said the weather went from heavy rain to light rain you know the conditions in lap one in the first five six laps were not intermediates. They were full wet conditions, but we're all just tiptoeing around on inters. But now by lap 11, these are inter conditions. You can see we are gaining massively through the S section here and the entirety of sector one up the hill before we go down and plunge down to that hairpin style corner on the left hander. And now can we maybe try and suss out a move? We're so close. We're as close as we were before, but this time, could this be the difference of now? You can see a bit of a dry line forming there, a bit dry, so an intermediate line basically. And now we're a lot closer. We've got a lot better subs stream here on Carlos Sainz. We're going to pull out to the right here. We are right up his gearbox. We have pulled out on the right-hand side, but he dives it back. I've not got the confidence on the braking, so he's come back at us there. We're side-by-side side through the next left-hander to the right-hander. We'll be on the inside line. Bit of contact made with Carlos Sainz, but that's all fair in game here as we try and jostle for position here, and we're fully opposite lock, literally drifting our car through these corners, but somehow we've drifted it into first place of the USA Grand Prix. A fantastic little battle there with Carlos Sainz, albeit short, a really fun one there. Literally opposite lock on the right-hander, and we made it through into first place. Science down to second. Verstappen third still, I should say. But that's a very good uh, job for us then, of course. We are ahead of Verstappen, ahead of Science. That is both boxes ticked. And now we try and survive and get away from Carlos Science in these next few laps here. Okay, the weather's certainly eased off for the time being. But we've still got a lot of standing water out there. We're happy for you to stay out on the Inters for now. So on lap 12 there, just guys giving you a bit of insight from what my engineer was saying on that lap. And as we move on through the Grand Prix, then I think like a lap or two later, this is Carlos Sainz now comes in early. For, so he pulls the trigger out of all of us there in the top three and comes in. And this will be for another set of intermediates, a fresh set of inters. And we've had this before in the past. I can't remember which Grand Prix it was, but I stayed out longer on the same set of inters whilst everyone else pit for fresh inters. And so I might end up doing that again because my engineer is going to tell me then later on that it's soon gonna dry up. It looks like we'll be running on a dry track soon. Back to dry shortly. So that team radio call right there was the, all the validation I needed to think that my strategy and my thought process here in the race of staying out on inters until we need uh, dry tyres, the slick tyres, is going to be correct because he just said it will dry up soon. I, I For now, I feel comfortable at least. Verstappen definitely doesn't because he comes in now for his pit stop to pretty much match Carlos Sainz who came in on the previous lap or two laps ago. And so both those guys are going to be on fresh inters. They will set fast lap times. I, that, I will admit that, but they're not going to have the track position there. So Sainz is coming through the last two corners now. He's actually still maintained P3 in the uh, on the actual track because that's how fast we three were. Myself, Verstappen and Sainz 
us three were in the world of our own, pretty much like 10 seconds or more ahead of P4, pretty much just pushing each other to go faster and faster. So really good pace from all three of us, but these two have pit, so Sainz just about navigates that Haskar there. There's Stappen that comes out in third place once again, so Sainz back up into P2, and at the same time as those guys come out then into turn one, we actually catch up to a very interesting uh, train of traffic here. So I don't know, these guys must have been fighting all race long because they've slowed each other up to the point where I've caught up this mega train of blue flag traffic. So this will be the only thing that maybe is going to cause me some issues right now at this point in the Grand Prix is navigating these guys. So I'm going to go very, very calm and easy. No, I don't need to dive into anything here. I've got so much time now on Science and Verstappen in terms of the track position. So there's no point trying to make a hasty move. So I'll take this nice and easy. Just try and find the gaps when I can. Now, there's so many blue flag cars here. Literally, I think there's a mega fight going on between the Ferrari Sauber, the Force India Williams, and even, I think, Ricardo there, who's obviously gone way down the order after his spin. So such a shame that Ricardo gets faced with more bad luck this episode. But this time, it wasn't even kind of his fault in terms of, it wasn't the car's fault. It was literally his teammate taking him out of the race and spinning him out of the out of the effective lead or second place at least and he comes into the pits but we go through the last corner then lap 16 on to lap 17 this will be and we're still going on the tires don't feel too bad don't get don't get me wrong they are worn but they don't feel worn enough that i feel like i desperately need to come in for a pit stop soon as we move on to lap 18 now the track you can see visually speaking has dried up a lot so i was actually thinking it might be time to come in now for dry tyres. My engineer did not give me the call yet, so I wasn't fully sure, so I continued on. Everyone else in the same boat. Everyone's still in too, so I thought, okay, we'll just keep on tiptoeing along. Science right, to pass up the Grand Prix. I say box in this lap, but that was just precautionary, really, because you can still see I've got enough kind of grip to chuck this car around. I think it's more maybe the tyre wear kicking in. Eventually, though, on lap 19, the very next lap this is, this is when the grip completely went away. You can see I'm literally now drifting again through the, uh, the last sector, just like I was when I made the move on car. Carlos Sainz going full opposite lock, trying to control this car and keep it in a straight line. And it's going all over the shop. So now it is time to go into slick tyres here. And we're still miles ahead of Sainz and Verstappen. So the strategy for us has worked out a, a magical treat, really. So in hindsight, we didn't even need to overtake Sainz on track. You know, the overtake we made, brilliant battle as it was. It wasn't even necessary because I would have got him with this strategy anyway. But, you know, it's kind of nicer for me. I feel like a bit more secure in myself that I overtook him on track, fair and square, even before we did this strategy here. So, you know, that's a double satisfaction, really. We did it on track and we did it also logically with the strategy. So now on to set of super softs, the middle compound attire here at Kota. And this should see us comfortably towards the end of the Grand Prix then. We've got some fuel uh, some fuel to save. We're in negative right now, but obviously that will come quite easy because we're able to kind of go a bit slower through the corners, lifting Kota if we need to even even uh, as we've got, you know, that time gap to Carlos Sainz in second place and Verstappen also even further back. And so now we just try and control this Grand Prix now. Eight laps to go and hopefully the sun will come out there by the time we cross the line and uh, by the time we get to lap 24, the sun is fully out then and we're going to get met with more good news for, I guess, the team more so than me, really, for the championship because I didn't really care who came second and third, but it's big news at least for the championship standings, perhaps. Okay, some information on Sainz. They're slowing down. It seems like there's some kind of problem with their car. So Carlos Sainz in second place does have an issue on the car. So we've seen before how much of an issue, uh, you know, when radio messages like that come through, how much of an issue that actually becomes. And so it's no surprise that eventually later in the Grand Prix, literally a lap or two later, Verstappen is right on the back of Carlos Sainz. Bit of an awkward uh, camera angle here, unfortunately, by the game. I couldn't quite get a nice angle to show you the overtake of Verstappen closing in quite rapidly here, but he is uh, closing in. He's already passed him there, and Sainz doesn't even put up much of a fight in the break zone there. He's down to third place, then Verstappen up into second and so that might just be a second one two in a row here in the back end of this season then we had a one two for the japanese grand prix fantastic stuff for the home grand prix of our engine supplier honda the honda japanese grand prix and now we come to usa i said it was a crucial race for us personally but as a team absolutely amazing to now have this one two here and hopefully now we just try and see this through hopefully not jinxing it now as we now see uh right ricardo actually right up the back of carlos Sainz. now this isn't for position actually this is how much Sainz hindered ricardo ricardo's a lap down. So Ricardo's going to be quite salty about this move maybe and be quite overly aggressive. That man, Hulkenberg of the Mercedes is actually the man in P4 but there goes Ricardo then into turn one. He actually locks up though so Sainz uh, sends one back down the inside there. You can't quite tell with this awkward uh, nose camera angle but there goes Ricardo then. He has re overtaken Carlos Sainz, unlapped himself there but that is how, you know, kind of annoying and controversial that was maybe for Ricardo and Renault there, you know, having teammates collide and sending one all the way to the back but eventually then, like I said, Hulkenberg, the man 
McLaren in P4 was the one closing up. And also Fernando Alonso in the, in the McLaren is not too far away as well. But the German's going to be the one that picks off the Spaniard first here. And he's going to go up into P3. DRS wide open on the left-hand side. That Renault still has that lingering issue, whatever it was, mechanical issue, I'm guessing. And so Hulkenberg down the inside there. And he's up in the podium positions in third place. That'll be a really great podium for Nico. He's not at the... You know, he's, he's had a very up and down first season here with the Silver Arrows in season six. But that's going to be a pretty big uh, result ahead of Hamilton, who's, uh, I think, down in P6 or P7 there. But we're going to come through. This is the more important thing. We're going to come through leading the USA Grand Prix, leading a 1-2 for Red Bull Honda once again. A second 1-2 in a row here at the back end of the season at the USA Grand Prix. It, it's going to take us back level on points with Verstappen, remember, because he got the win last race. I got second place. And so this will be to equal his points in the Drivers' Championship. But uh, finally, finally, it's been a long while since we've been on the top step of the podium this season, to be honest. And so we win the USA Grand Prix. Such a satisfying victory this is, I'll tell you that. Great job. You've done everything we wanted today. It was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today. And I have to wonder, Anthony Davidson, just what set them apart from the competition here. I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. There has been a lot of downs this season, but there's been a lot of equal ups here. Another 1-2 for Red Bull Honda. I don't know. I think that might be our fourth 1-2 of the season, I want to say. I think. I don't know what the quite stats are. If someone remembers it, put it, definitely put it down in the comments below. But, but it definitely has felt like we've had a fair few 1-2s for Red Bull Honda, which has, which has been so, so satisfying uh, as a team. And also just visually speaking, to have both our cars right up there. And this fight just continues to brew up now because we're back, like I said, level on points with Verstappen in the championship there because of course we were level going into Japan. He, we then got a 1-2 with Verstappen winning myself second and we swapped that back around so we're back level on points. Carlos Sainz now is back down to third place but he is a lot closer than he was before the rushing Grand Prix remember so he's still you know pretty close. If he wins the next Grand Prix and we're in second uh, and Verstappen third he's back in the lead of the championship uh, by seven points there so it is going to be you know ultra ultra tight stuff here. Constructors wide though with the consistency of myself and Verstappen and the battle up for Ricardo. We are still waltzing away with this Constructors title. So we'll probably wrap up the Constructors quite early, actually, in this season. And we'll leave it to be a kind of out-and-out -out scrap for the drivers, which is probably going to go down to the wire at this right here. The next race, Mexico, we have those upgrades. I just can't quite tell how Mexico is going to go because it's it's not a particularly weak track, but it's not a particularly strong track for me. It's always I had some great racing with the slipstream, so I just can't call Mexico, to be honest. So it's going to be a big, big mystery and a very exciting one for next episode. But this one was a very crucial race for myself personally just to break the streak of Verstappen, the, the hot streak, the momentum he's had, you know, six, uh, five wins in like six races, uh, the DNF obviously a rush here, but I also had a DNF, so we needed this win, we needed it, and we've got it today in exceptional circumstances like that, so overtake Carlos Sainz in the, in the rain, then just absolutely dominate the Grand Prix with the strategy and control the race like that, I, I even had the, I had the time there on the table to put the engine down to lean mixture to save the engine components at the end of that race, you would have seen I was going quite slowly on that last after the Grand Prix so it was just such a satisfying victory at the end of that thing so really really good stuff there so let's go to the end of the episode then and answer some questions from Claire. The fans really seem to enjoy that you made it look easy it doesn't get much better than a win at this track does it? Gonna go with the uh, old favourite Lewis Hamilton line the best fans around and also go for the rep increase for Red Bull here and say my team are behind me absolutely awesome stuff there good rep increase. Everything went your way today it looked like you had a really good strategy for the race. Obviously, I overtook Carlos Sainz on track, but in the end, the good strategy was always going to pay out there, so I've got to go with the right-hand side answer there. You're breaking all expectations. What's your secret? And I could have been quite egotistical, but I thought I'd go for the more cheeky answer, go kind of neutral way and just say that would be telling. You know, my secret is a secret for a reason. <laughs> you performed better than last weekend. What changed? And the answer I wanted to say wasn't really here in these answers, but one thing we did tweak, obviously, was that aero, going higher aero in the race, which did help us out, to be fair. So I'm going to go with that answer on the bottom-hand side there, the aero. Appreciate your time. 
And so we go through to the end of the episode, and a very enjoyable one, so especially for me and hopefully for you guys as well. So be sure to smash that like button if you did enjoy. Let me know what you thought in the comments below, guys. And we also get an extra 600 points on the R&D there for finishing above second place there. So a contract goal obtained. We kind of need that in a way for the extra resource points because I wanted to try and spend some more points. Now, I was very tempted to purchase the ultimate front downfalls because we got the ultimate rear one coming next race. So, I, you know, my OCD kicked in. I wanted to kind of balance out the front and the rear, but in the end, it's not going to be worth it because it'll come in for Abu Dhabi. It's just, there's just no point, is there? We may as well do that later at the end of the season, maybe. So instead, I know there's been a lot of calls for us to do reliability. To be honest, I've not, I felt, I felt like we haven't need to, needed to because although, yes, there's been some crazy moments of, you know, the engine obviously having some issues, in the end, you know, we were able to pull it back together. And our, like I said, my mantra has always been this season. I'd rather have a fast car and a brittle one than the other way around. But finally, we do have the points, I guess, to spend. I don't want to spend it particularly on anything else. So we do spend some resource points on improving the gearbox and also I think that's the MGUH that was but also ironically uh, it probably won't save us to be honest because we have those two upgrades coming now reliability wise but it's probably not going to be enough because next episode we, we're still far on the engine I think you know because I used some older components actually this race because I knew it was going to be a wet race so a bit of a slow one so I actually used a much more worn out uh, telecombustion engine to keep a fresh one for the end of the season here so I should be pretty good on components wise I think knock on wood for the rest of the season now on the engine side but the gearbox was very worn this episode. I have one more race to go on it, so that's probably not going to be enough. So next episode Mexico, I probably will have to break the seal and take a gearbox penalty, a five-place grip penalty next episode, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But again, guys, if you did enjoy the episode, be sure to smash the like button. Let me know your thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, you can subscribe for weekly, for more content. I've been Arava. I'm today. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.